Okay, so today I'm going to review some of these uh, Local King Rubber Stamp combo sets. Um, these happen to be some of the newer releases, but we have the Rose here. It's actually called 2020 Combo 001. And we have 2020 Combo 002, which is your Fuchsia, which is my one of my favorite. Actually, Roses are my favorite too. I now have Frida Kahlo Rose. I keep putting on my Instagram because it's so pretty. So this was sent for review. Uh, so thank you so much, Local King Rubber Stamp, uh, for doing so. Uh, free of charge, of course, and all opinions are my own. This one I picked up on my own. But since they're very similar, I figure we can just do them both together, a little tutorial, doing them slightly different, um, and see what we come up with. So I have these guys. If you guys recall in the last video, uh, we did some stamp backgrounds. Now this one, may, well, maybe, I don't know. I, I added some water to it because it was water reactive dye just to kind of make it fun. And then again, I told you my vision would be to stamp like a fairy silhouette on here. But we do have these other ones that we tried out, these backgrounds. Um, and I told you guys we would use them uh, soon. So I think we're going to use them today. I might add a little more color just to make it coordinate more with what we're doing. But for now, we have the watercolor. This is regular stamping paper background. This is the watercolor uh, paper background and this one is the glossy paper that local king carries background but we're gonna use that behind our uh, project kind of like what lisa did here in the card that she sent along with my um order so really cute just you know fun and then you can add a sentiment or however you want to finish that off so we have that um, I'll have the link for the last video so you can see how to make the backgrounds um, the, uh, these are the backgrounds there it's river rocks and as you see like this one's so cute it's just like a little koi fish down there or is it the goldfish I can't yeah eh. and then um little angel fish here and then this is the um dew background and again she just has a very simple um sentiment with like a, like a cute little accent item on that one so they come out really nicely uh, we will be using the magic mushrooms that were sent for my review um I have some inks already pulled out these are the harmony water reactive dye inks whatever inks you want to use um, obviously are fine with magic mushrooms. You want to stick to pretty much water-based inks, uh, water-based dye inks. Um, so your mementos. I mean, there's lots of brands. Pretty much every brand has that. Unless it says it's pigment or something like that, that's a little bit different. Uh, the pigment ink will deposit like little sediments. And you can, you know, even with any other inker you might have, if you've used pigment inks, they will be sitting there waiting for you for the next time. So they're really hard to clean off. Um, I just dipped this on my paper and I can see, all right, well... It's off to the side, you can't see it, but let me see. It's still thick on there from the last time I used pigment ink on here. So just that's kind of the reason of that. Um, so I do have different colors and we'll talk about that as we use them. Um, I'm going to, hopefully what I'm gonna do is go ahead and stamp on, I'm gonna use regular cardstock even though you can blend much better and much nicer on watercolor paper, like even the feel of it. Like this cardstock in my hand just feels, you know, it's a little bit rough and it's stamping paper, but it still feels rough. Like this feels so smooth and it's the back side of watercolor paper because watercolor paper has some texture, but this other side was smooth and it feels really nice. So the blending is gonna be much nicer on this and then even better on that glossy paper. But I'm gonna use regular cardstock and then probably do one in glossy paper just so we can see the difference. I am probably going to emboss one of them with um, clear embossing powder. And um, so all the links for the items will be in the description box. And we also have an extra 5% off coupon that expires May 15th. 2020 so in a couple weeks here it just depends when you're watching the video so make sure to use that if you go over to local king uh, to make some uh, purchases there and I think that's it we should well let me talk about the dies real quickly I guess as uh, we go along here um, you have this is a, what they call a combo she sells it together so you have your uh, red rubber uh, stamp. This is a detail stamp, but it does have a lot of areas where it's kind of like um, her uh, shadow stamps where you can just color this. You can color this with ink, with different colored inks where, you know, you think it should go and just stamp it and it looks really nice. I'm going to go with just basic black today, but um, that's something you can do. And then we have the uh, shadow, right, this outer shadow um, die. The inner one cuts itself out, but it also, you can use it for embossing. It also cuts out some uh, really cute little kind of fun dimensional things along with the, the flower there. So um, really fun to use. I don't think I'm gonna do embossing, dry embossing, you know, running it back through with the embossing um, mat, but we will see. So let me clear out the space. Um, and we'll get started. Okay, guys, so I'm gonna use my stamping platform to stamp my images, but oh, look at this card. I made this yesterday. I know usually I don't open things or work on them unless I make a video for you guys and then I go from there uh, because I always like to just try things out on camera. But my kids are, you know, it's the weekend. They're always awake. They're playing. I 
don't want to interrupt them. So I could not wait to play with the things I hauled from Local King. So this is one of the items I made and it was did not take very long and hopefully you guys will like it and I will do this tutorial next. Okay, so this one I'm trying to go from kind of easy, not easier because this is easy too, but like more basic to uh, a little more maybe um, things going on, right? <laughs> so really cute. I love that so much. Um, but okay. I'm going to go ahead and stamp on my glossy paper first because I'm going to use stays on because I do like the way stays on dries faster and you work faster with it, but you can use VersaFine. Um, that, that's fine. Um, so I'm going to get my fuchsia. Oops. And I'm just going to ink this up and stamp it and then we're going to do some coloring of it with um, ink pads. Okay, so stays on. Oopsie. I always keep these carrier things on there. Do you guys keep them? Even my VersaFine has that little piece of fabric it comes with. <laughs> but I'm going to rub, rub, rub to make sure we're getting everything. Now, you can also use a stamp positioner because let's say you don't like the way it's stamped or something happened, you know, it didn't come out quite right. A uh, stamp positioner will help you get it right back in that same spot and stamp it again, right? But for this one, I think we're going to be okay. So I have my glossy paper shiny side up, of course. And this doesn't matter where I stamp it because I'm just going to um, cut it out. But I do want to make sure it gets on there. And I do have a paper pad underneath. It's basically close to my heart from when I used to sell it. And so, you know, as you're working, you can just tear it away. Um, but it does help give it a bounce. But my rubber mat that I normally have underneath helps with that a lot. Look at that. How gorgeous that image is. Rich um, color and everything. Stays on. Clean it off with alcohol or with stays on cleaner. Okay. Do not leave that on there because after a while, especially with red rubber, it might start deteriorating or make it so it doesn't stamp very well. Now we have um, a piece of just regular Crafter's Companion stamping card. Um, I don't ever use like recollections to stamp on or anything like that anymore you guys. That stuff is just junk paper. Do not use that for it. Just because it's white and you think oh I'll just use this because it's white paper. It does not look good. It's not going to let you blend. It's not even good for stamping. I mean, you're not going to be able to color it even with your alcohol ink marker. So I know that's the kind of stuff you go and you grab at the store, but not good. Okay, so this one I want to get ready and hopefully I get a good image the first time because you can do this with colorful inks. It doesn't matter. You can stamp with pigment inks because they last, uh, they stay wet longer. But what I'm going to do is stamp this and then we're going to emboss it. So let me get this ready. Where's my clear embossing powder? I usually have it sitting right here next to me. <laughs> but it's always when I need it, I have to actually search for it. There it is. See? I knew I have it next to me all the time. Okay. So, so what happens is VersaFine stays wet for a while, kind of like a pigment ink, but not a pigment ink. <laughs> so this is why I was telling you I have this little carrier. So I'm going to go ahead and ink this up, and then we're going to emboss it. And that's just a tip I got from watching Lisa's videos. So um, Lisa is the owner of Local King. I hadn't mentioned her name really here in this video, but I'll have the link to her um, videos or to her YouTube channel. And people are saying they're really enjoying her and saying thank you for letting us know about her channel. Um, so I'm just going to stamp this. Yeah, okay, there we go. <laughs> and this, again, stays wet enough for a minute that you can uh, just emboss right on there. I'm just really trying to make sure I have every single area because I did not use a stamp positioner this time. Pretty good. All right. And that one you can just wipe off with a towel or with whatever you like to clean off your stamps with. And this is just clear embossing powder. And I pretty much <laughs> dump like the whole thing because it's such a small little tube of it, but just make sure you get it all on here. And again, I try not to hit my paper too much, especially because we're going to cut this out anyway. So even if you get like clear embossing powder somewhere, you don't want it. It's not going to hurt. Okay. And then I guess I've been doing a lot of embossing recently because I always have my heat tool plugged in. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it on. Yeah. 
once it gets shimmery, you can move on, right? So, uh, you can see that. nice that stamped I mean check that out and you can see all the detail from the little cross hatching in the in the image and everything so nice and then this was a uh, crafters companion clear embossing powder so let me put this away and um, we'll get ready to cut and color okay so for the rose um, I'm gonna go ahead and work with that because I know this is good to go um, again you have a shadow die so you can just cut that out from any color or you can cut out um, Kind of like, well, I mean, basically that's what it's for in this one. Uh, she has different dies, and a lot of them do have an outer edge that helps you do, like, shaker cards or something else. But for this one, we're just going to use the inner portion. And that will cut it out perfectly there. And you can just eyeball this. You can make yourself a guiding window, or I call it an aperture. I think Lisa calls it a guiding window, but however you like. Um, trying to make sure that's pretty good. You can color this first, I suppose, if you want, and then cut it out. But um, I think Lisa had mentioned, like, let's say you cut it a little bit crooked, then your coloring is going to look kind of funky. So it's better just to cut it out first and then color it. But however you like. I'm going to use the marquee. So the marquee is just going to cut it for me. If you wanted to emboss this again, you know, for it to have that rubber embossing, then just run it through any other machine that you have that um, has that option, right? Your Gemini, your Empress, your Cuddlebugs, Big Shots, you know, all those things. But for now, I'm just going to simply cut this thing out. Again, with my marquee, using the same cutting folder I've been using since the beginning. <laughs> I'm going to leave this here because I'm going to use it again in just a minute. And then uh, Lisa always says, just to make sure that it actually cut everything, like take a good look, because if you're missing a piece, like you can kind of tell on the back of a die when it didn't cut all the way through, but I can see this cut through completely. Um, to... Uh, just check because what happens is it's so detailed like once you pop it out maybe you can't get it back in the right spot to try to cut it again so just make sure you know it's cut really nicely let me put these to the side here because I can probably use it for the next one and another tip she likes to give is to rub the cutting edge of your dies with a um, with a dryer sheet because it helps remove it without you know maybe possibly tearing or whatever but look at look how intricate that cut is. You see, let me put it on something here. Well, it's probably hard to see because it's white on white, but like this see through here. So pretty. So, we're going to color this in just a minute. I'm going to get the fuchsia, um, this guy, and just use the same, you know, my dye and put the, uh, on here, put it on here and cut it out, and then we'll start coloring. whenever I pull these away from the die you're kind of peeling away from the die from the back don't try to pull the die up from the top that way you can kind of see what you're doing and get a good uh, a nice cut but like look how detailed that is my goodness and I just eyeballed that again you can cut it out on a scrap paper so you can kind of have a little window and I've done tons of videos where I showed you how to do that um, but again uh, I was just eyeballing it. So now you can look at your carrier sheet if you just want to really make sure like to know what's the rose and what's the green part. So do whatever you like. So I'm just going to go for it. Um, I'm going to color some of the leaves green first and I have <clears throat> a lighter green and a darker green. I've never used this water reactor one called Spring Meadow so I need to open this. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
So again, she says with the magic mushrooms, you just kind of want to, let me get this lighting a little, well, no, that's not better. I was gonna say, let me get this lighting better, but that was not better. Um, I'm gonna close up a little bit more. Is to not really just pounce, <clears throat> excuse me, not pounce into your colors, but just kind of slide across. And then for this one, it's not gonna matter as much, but if you're gonna go to do some blending, you really wanna make sure the color isn't too bright. So you can kind of pounce it off a little bit and then go in. But for right now, I'm just going to basically you can rub into your leaves or however you want to handle that. And there's only a little bit going on maybe here, the base of this one. Okay, and since I use a light green, I'm not super concerned to clean it off to go into Grasshopper, the darker green, and just add a little bit of that, just for dimension, right? We're adding colors just to build up a little bit. And you see I've got some of my flower, that doesn't bother me, but if it bothers you, what you can do is mask that area with, um, let's say a scrap paper like this. You can kind of isolate what you want to color, right? And then just get in there. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, I think that's all I was gonna do with the green. Obviously I'm gonna need it for the fuchsia in a little bit here. So I'm just gonna put this to the side. I'm not gonna clean it off yet cause I'm gonna use it again. Um, maybe I'll pounce it a little bit just to get some of that dark green off. And then I'm gonna make my flower red and yellowish orange. So hopefully it'll kind of blend a little bit. So we have Chinese red and we have honey pot. And I will start with honey pot, the yellow color. Um, actually it's kind of an orangey color. So I have been using my orange pouncer for this one or magic mushroom. And so I'm just gonna go in and pretty much just add a little bit of color, maybe a little bit deeper in the center, a little bit less on the edges. Cause I'm gonna come in with the red anyway. How do we clean this off? Since I'm done using that color, and I'm not sure I'm done using the color, I might come back in. Let's just wait a second. <laughs> Since I may not be done anyway, there's no sense in cleaning it now and cleaning it again later. And now I'm gonna use red, which I have not used my red one yet. So, get some of that color. See how nicely that picks up that color though? Okay, so red. Yeah, I'm probably gonna come back with my orange one. Do a little blending. Okay, and coming back in with that honey pot, just getting a little more color on it. And I'm just going to kind of, I'm just kind of turning it, giving it a little zhuzh, just to make sure to get into all those nooks and crannies and kind of mix that red. Hopefully you can see that it's blending pretty nicely. And a little bit down here at the bottom of this little bud. And Basically that is colored and done. I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna put this one to the side and we're gonna move on to um, our fuchsia. But let me show you how to clean these off real quick. As far as cleaning, it's not like an emergency that you gotta clean it right away. But um, since I'm done with it, I'm just gonna put them back or maybe in the next project I'm gonna do right now, you know, I have something slightly different. So I've been having my crafters companion, Terry Tell here or microfiber just, Spraying it with a little water. Do not submerge these in water because um, they'll grow really big and it takes a while to come back. And then on a dry side, give it a squeeze. And I don't know if you can see, there's no color. Okay, so really fast to clean, super easy. I'll clean my red one off and when I'm all done. And let me put this away. Done with these two. Okay, so for my fuchsia, I have some really pretty colors here. I have parakeet, fuchsia, and crushed velvet. Um, I only brought this out just in case, but I should be able to blend the other two colors, hopefully, to do something nice. We'll see. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead. And... Actually, this time I'm gonna do the flower first, and then we'll come in with the green leaves because it's very little leaf in the background anyway. So let me think, um, again, you can look at your carrier sheet for some inspiration. Now you can also spectrum noir these, you know, alcohol ink these, whatever it is, however, it is, however it is that you want to color them. If you're using Versafine, obviously you need to use an alcohol proof ink. Versafine is waterproof. So dye based inks are waterproof. 
if you're going to be stamping and then Spectrum Noir or something else um, or Copics, you need to use obviously your uh, alcohol proof inks. So whatever you know medium you're using, use the proper ink. Um, but this one looks like it's kind of been colored in. Um, Lisa also has videos where you can use her um, markers, which I'll review in the next video, to color in images and they work just fine. But let's start, I, I, I guess I'll start with the fuchsia. Fuchsia is a really deep, rich color, so I am definitely going to take some of it off. And I'm just going to put a little bit on these little bells down here. And just kind of in here, bring some of that color in. So pretty. And I'm going to go right for parakeet. Parakeet is like, oh, I haven't opened this one. Um, I guess he's kind of blue. I would say he might belong in this family, like the tealy one, huh? Let's do that. Look how deep that is. So again, yeah. This is the glossy paper. And the glossy paper is a lot of fun because it blends very easily. And if you want a little darker, a little lighter, um, just release the pressure, right, as you're working with it. Look how pretty that purple came out. I'm going to leave the pink kind of pristine and pink down here. I'm going to dip into that pink again. Fuchsia, little fuchsia. Okay. Wow. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. I'll clean those off in a minute. So again, I did not need the purple. It did its own purple blending. I know there's a lot going on, but hopefully you can see that. And then we're gonna bring our green back. Let me see, yeah. So again, let's start with a light green. Again, if you wanna mask areas off, that's up to you. That's so pretty, even the way it blends with that blue that's left on the leaves is really nice. And grasshopper, our darker green, just kind of at the top here. And then you can take a little bit of that green and kind of I'm just give this a squish and kind of bring it down here. And maybe a little in the little sepals here. Look at that. That is like a technic color. Gorgeous fuchsia. Okay, let me clean this up. Um, clean off all my little mushrooms and we will just mat it up on top of the uh, backgrounds we made yesterday. Okay. So whenever you cut down the background stamps, if you cut the very edge off or, you know, whatever is wherever you stamped it, these are about four by five and a quarter. So they're a perfect mat for a standard A2 size card, which you can um, then double them up, triple them up if you had a bigger card, but you're just gonna stamp another piece or continue stamping however you like. Um, and I'm not saying that they uh, match up completely if you do that, it's just a way of extending your image. Um, so I'm going to mat these on a white piece of paper that is five and uh, three eighths by four and an eighth. So just smaller, right? I, well, just bigger than this, but just smaller than your, your card base. Okay. And then um, we have our standard A2 size card, which again is five and a half by eight and a half. And I'm just going to fold it in half, but you can score it right at four and a quarter. So it's going to be something like this plus the image that we, that we made, right? in there, something like that. So it's a very small edge around the white paper, but you can cut the sizes however you like. So we did say that we were gonna stylize this just a little bit. So for the do, I am gonna use my um, my rose. I was like, where did I put it? She's over here hiding out, sorry. Ay. So we have our rose here. Um, I'm not sure how I wanna put it on here. It's like Lisa has hers kinda of hanging off the side over here, let me see. Yeah. So before I do that, let's. I said I was gonna finish or do something different with the card base just in case. So I'm gonna add maybe some. What do you think? A little bit of red. <laughs> I don't know. Sure, because right now we have like a light blue and green. Red is very bright, so I'm gonna take a lot of that off and just kind of come in. Try to add some of that in. Just adding some of that color. And maybe I'll come in with some yellow, that honey pot.
And I just kind of gave it a little bit more something different. Okay. I'm going to get this again matted up. Again, if you're not good at matting, go ahead and use a wet glue so you can move it around. Okay, and then get that on. And you can even give this some dimension so this is off your card. But I'm just going to go ahead and stick it down flat. Has such small margins it's really hard to tell where I'm if I'm going up too high or very very small margin of black around the edge oh you can barely even see it there okay and so now um, I want to show you something so like I said on her dies shows us something kind of fun or something kind of special sorry that was a quick transition so if you can see there's like little flaps that can open up and it's basically the petals right so I can kind of move this petal forward so I'm gonna do that now. A lot of times you can stick it down and then do this, but I'd rather do it now so I know where I'd put my glue. Um, the, the bud has a little something like that. And then down here, this last, excuse me, this last petal has something like that. So you can see that it has some movement and the leaves are flat. So what I'm gonna do is just take some Colal 3D glue gel because it's probably the easiest thing for me to manipulate. I'm finally opening a new one, you guys. <laughs> I don't want to sit here trying to squeeze the last bits out of the other one. But that one lasted me a long time. Oh my goodness. There we go. And... <clears throat> Brand new and it's already super hard to squeeze. Ay. Of course, you can use whatever dimensional adhesives you have. I just feel like this is the easiest. And I don't have to just squeeze it the way I'm doing, but that's what I'm doing. You can get it into a syringe. You can take pieces off with um, a tool. Oh. But I'm just doing this kind of thing. Um, I think that'll be good enough to hold this down. Let me think. I don't know if I want... I'm just trying to think how I want this set up. Yeah, that's fine. This is basically the same way. I just turned it sideways. <laughs> and then if I was to put a, um, a sentiment on here, put it down in this area, right? So I'm just going to squish, squish, squish my glue. Super cute card. That did not take too long. The background, I mean, it just is a stamping and some, you know, uh, magic mushrooming, so those work up really fast too. But let's go get to the uh, fuchsia. Okay, with the fuchsia, okay, I'm gonna have the same card base and all that, but what I wanted to show you was, I'm gonna put it on the river rock. So we probably will come in with a little more color because obviously it's very plain kind of for the fuchsia right now. Um, again, you have the shimmery background we can also use. They're both shiny. Um, but look how pretty it also looks on this background. I'm almost thinking I should put it on this one, guys. Should we do this one? I think we should make it really bright. Let me see how big my paper is cut. Okay, so it looks like I cut my paper down to about four and a quarter um, by five and a quarter. I'm sorry, four by five and a quarter. It looks like that's what I had trimmed it. Yes, we're going to use this. This is going to be fun. This is wild. Um, but if I was going to use this one, I would come in with some purple maybe and some other pinks and kind of, you know, decorate this in a way that goes with the card. But yes, we're definitely going to do this. Let's do it. <laughs> so... Um, uh, just need the back. This will be a really nice psychedelic card. And there. 
So if you guys are liking these, it seems like you do. Um, just a really fun, different way of using stamps. Um, she has, Lisa there at Local King has so many ideas, like it's just crazy. So many cute ideas, so many cute stamps, so many cute dies that go along with them or sets that you know you can buy already together. And again with this one, I'm gonna do the same thing where I'm gonna look on the back and see where the trimming is. So this guy comes up, this little bit comes up too. She even has a little bit here that you can kind of move, but not too much, so I'm just gonna leave that one. So we'll get that one. And then of course the little petals. She even has um, dyes of like animals where she'll do that with like the muzzle. You can pop it up or like different little areas. You have to look at it to make sure because it's not something you expect so you wouldn't even pay attention. So just make sure whenever you get dyes from her to see if there's anything like that on your dye before you go to stick things down. Okay, these guys are going to be fun because they're small-ish. Again, the syringe would probably be better for this. And you can use whatever dimensional adhesives you like that you have there at home. Here we go. Gorgeous. Wow, I love it. Okay, and again, whatever sentiment you might have, um, you know, stamp it however you like. Um, oh, you know what I should have done? Darn it. I have this really pretty background stamp from her that has, like, um, letters, and I could have just used that real quick. But maybe I'll do it but off camera here because I do, I think it'd be pretty. Um, this one. And it's called Words One, and I think she said it's, like, the definition of love and stuff, so all you can do is... I should have done this before. And look, I don't even have to take it off the carrier sheet. Just leave it on here, and let's say I took this crushed velvet. Let me see, where am I gonna stamp it? Just do something like that. Take my card. Kinda rub it on there. Ooh, and I have these pretty, that still looks really great. I might put some on this top corner because I like it so much, but look at that. Pretty, pretty. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll have all the links for you, and um, I will see you guys at the next one. Okay, bye now.